Mark Isherwood. Uh, Dr. Clarence, well, the gap between the supply of vaccines and the uh, capacity to deploy those vaccinations in Wales is causing particular concern when it comes to police officers. Responding to you last week, I referred to calls by the North Wales Police Federation for policing to be considered for some, not for, but some priority on the COVID-19 vaccination programme. Many current and former North Wales police officers have written to me since, stating that every single day, police officers and staff run the risk of coming into contact with a person with COVID, contracting it themselves, and then bringing the killer virus back into their own homes, and asking for the Welsh Government to commit to giving policing some priority. And on Monday, North Wales Police Federation told me they were contacted last weekend by, quote, very reliable sources working within the vaccination centres who advised that hospital secretaries and even social workers working from home are receiving the vaccine, yet frontline policing is still not considered to be a risk or even being allowed to use up any spare or unused vaccines. How do you therefore respond to their specific statement that even getting frontline police officers on a standby list, like is happening in some parts of England, uh, might be a start? Well, I think I should go back to some of the uh, points that are rehearsed with both Dallas Jewell and others on the prioritisation list. The independent expert JCVI have given us advice on how to make best use of the vaccines that we have available. Chief Medical Officers have endorsed that advice because it will help to save as many lives as possible. The current priority list one to nine that the JCVI have uh, recommended and every government, including your Conservative colleagues in England, has followed that prioritisation because it should mean that 99% of the hospitalisations and deaths that take place will be covered within those first nine priority groups. The JCVI will be considering advice to give to chief medical officers and ministers like myself in all four governments on the next phase of the vaccination uh, that is to come. And I'm looking forward to receiving that advice and an understanding if they'll give advice on occupational risk groups uh, for that second vaccination stage. Whether people are teachers, police officers, taxi drivers or bus drivers, people need to consider the risk to different occupations of the harm that can be caused by COVID. When I get that advice, I'll then make a decision. I'll be open and transparent what it is, but you can rely on the fact that my choice will be about the public health case to save the greatest number of lives as quickly as possible. Question.